Okay, uh, HO, or I, I suppose almost any uh, HO, S, O, N, Z. Well, Z may not work out, but whatever gauge you are, I've just struggled and struggled and struggled trying to figure out how to get the marker lights in these things. And I used fiber optics before, and I developed these things, which are kind of big really for trying to fit in a small spot so I watched another video and this guy basically used a process where he drilled holes in the ends of the LEDs and I tried that but they just chip out so that didn't seem to be too successful but so what I've done is three you know has the uh, coupler sound to it but you can turn on the, the lights so that works out pretty good the red ones are on too so I'm going to flip this over and kind of show you just kind of what it looks like. Because you got red in the back and green in the front. And the way it's wired is coming off the sound side of the decoder. This side here, pin 1 is the brown and that's F3. So that's what the dish lights are hooked into. Pin 4, yellow, is F4 and that's what... So if I hit 4, that turns on the interior lights. And of course 0 still works for the headlights. And everything else stays basically the same. Well, I tried. I missed the fly. So it's wired, again, just as the rest of them, coming off the board. So you can see P1 is orange, P2 is yellow, P3 is not used, P4 is black, 5 is gray, 6 is white, 7 is blue, and 8 is red. And then when I've installed the light strip, the 12 volt LED light strip inside, which I'm not going to show you now, it's on another video, this time I ran a 620 ohm resistor to it, and that kind of softened that light in there a little bit. It's a 12 volt feed off of the uh, Digitrax SDH-166D decoder. So that works out pretty good. And then the Minitronics 3 millimeter yellow glows are 3 to 4 volts, so they get a 470 ohm resistor. And that seems to work out pretty good. Uh, the lights will work just about forever. And of course you can reverse it and then you can see that light, light did come on. So. Anyway, so this is kind of a short, but I just kind of wanted to show you how I did it. Now, the LEDs are one and a half volt for the dish lights. And there's a green one and a red one. And all I did was take some uh, adhesive, and in this case, I use this Formula 560 canopy glue. So I filed down the front of the bulb because it had a round. Uh, surface to it and flattened it and then polished it up a little bit and then put shrink over the bulb. I put shrink as I think you can see in there the blue shrink over the fiber optics coming up to the front and I brought that down so it held the two ends perfectly together then trimmed them off and then I put in the canopy glue and then put those in making sure the fiber optics went right up to the light bulb but it's this stuff really the, the, the canopy glue basically dries crystal clear so it doesn't matter so as you can see you get really good light from it so it's worked out really well the red one same way these are small enough now what I'll do now is I'll bond these down making them tight and then run the wires beside the speaker to get them out of the way and then I don't have any problem getting this thing put together. So let's do that. Other than that everything is the same as it was before. And uh, I'm quite pleased with it. So let's get it all together then put it on the track and see how it looks when it's operating. Okay making sure the tension was equal on the uh, fiber optics. Ta -dee -ta -dee here and here and making sure they're flush in the ends and not uh, hung up someplace 
Then I took and put a little bit of the bonding agent, the adhesive. Then I used what used to be a credit card. They're no good anymore. And I use those and I bridge across, hold them down, then use just regular old snap clothespins. Did it on both ends and that'll have to cure. And then when this goes on, I think these may affect it just a little bit. But once it's cured, the only thing it can do is maybe be stretch it. It's not going to pull anything apart, I don't think. So uh, it should be fine. I left just enough slack in it that it can do that with not having to worry about the marker lights coming back out a little bit. And the way I make the lens on the end of the uh, fiber optics is just what I showed in the other video, except I make sure I don't touch it with the soldering iron. And they're a little bit smaller, but I think they're going to be more effective. So. And they look a lot better, and they're just very crystal clear, and they have good light emittance, so I'm real happy with it. So we'll just kind of go over it real quick. You can see how it's wired up. And if you have any questions, please ask. And if you need a more detailed ex example of this, I got about, I think, 11 of them to do. Different brands and different models, one, twos, and threes. And I'm kind of excited about getting into them. I've ordered a bunch more uh, of the uh, Digitrax decoders from my friends at Yankee Dabbler. And they program them for the RDC for me. And I do appreciate it. And they're just a joy to deal with. So look them up. They're online. YankeeDabbler.com. All one word. All small case. Okay, thanks. We'll get back to this when it's ready to run. Okay, so this is the back end. You can see her red lights. We'll turn on her headlights. She's ready to go backwards. And we'll give her a couple punches on the throttle. Okay, and you can see your green lights on the front, and we'll bring her forward. And there she is. So I'm pleased with it. I hope you are too. And I'll put this on YouTube along with listing this thing on eBay. And it's Friday, I think, the 7th of November, 2015. So for my Canadian friends, I was stationed in Canada and, and part of 64 and all of 65, first part of 66 in Air Rescue, 54th Air, Air Rescue Squadron up there being the good neighbor that I was. Loved it, except for the fact I was away from my wife and my two babies at that time, so. So anyway, we'll put her back in reverse and let her go back for a little bit and we'll just end this thing. And thanks for watching.